<laughs> trying to create a program with a sensible syntax. Um, I have it working, kind of. The extensible bits are not accessible from inside the language yet, and there are some conceptual issues that I have to solve, but putting aside the accessible syntax bit, which is, in fact, the goal of the language, so I don't know why you put it aside, but putting aside the extensible syntax bit, I'm going to show you what I have. Um, so, it has numbers, big surprise. It can add numbers. Strings and it can even output strings. It can even do a weird kind of printf. Okay, which I only get because the underlying platform knows how to do that already. Um, <laughs> so, all right, let's suppose I wanted to define something in this language. Well, I do it like that. And now x is 2. Let's say I wanted to make a function. That's how I would do it. So that weird backslash syntax is how you make a lambda literal. Um, the parentheses surround the arguments, and then the things after the parentheses is the body. So let's look at another. Okay, so what's the value of x? It's two. So const should ignore what I give it and give me two. If I change the value of x, cost doesn't care. It always gives me the same value because it refers to that, the value of x when I define it, not what I do later. Um, so I could go around defining functions using this syntax, blah, blah, blah. But there's a nicer syntax, which is like that. Um, so let's define a function that does something actually vaguely useful. I want to see whether x is equal to 0. So we could do this the boring way. And I think this works. All right? Is 0, 0? Yep. 0 is 0. Is 0, 2? No. <laughs> um, you'll notice this compiled thing. That's just what it compiles down to, which I've put in there for debugging purposes. Um, so it's compiling down to some scheme code. Let's write is zero in a more interesting way. Let's use pattern matching. Oops. <laughs> so this is saying examine zero. Here's the first case. If it is in fact, examine our argument x. If it is in fact zero, then return true, although I return false. Okay, that seems to work. But what kind of patterns do we have? Well, so now I'm going to try and introduce, in a minute and a half, the way my language has a structuring data, data, or one of the ways. So here are two declarations. Tag nil, well, it does something weird. It prints out tag nil, and then val nil equals some procedure, construct, or something. All that means is that nil is a function that takes no arguments and returns to me this thing, nil. Cons is a function that takes two arguments and returns to me this thing, cons of the arguments. Basically, I'm introducing new dynamic types into my language, right? Um, and then I can pattern match them. For example, I could case nil. Well, if it's nil, otherwise, boom. And it compiles to this really long thing, forget about all that, it's nil. <laughs> and then if I ask, well, is 2 nil? Nope. Nope, it's not. <laughs> Let me plug that again. Nope, it is not nil. OK, so let's write a little function. Um, let's write a mapping function. Case L. If it's nil, then just give me nil. If it's a cons of an x's and x's, then give me cons of f of x and map f x's. So this should map a function across a list that is represented as a bunch of conses and divided out. So if I 
do that. Now, add one times one times two. No. It works. That didn't work. <laughs> you can't add one to a string. All right, that's it.